Ladies and gentlemen, the glasses definitely need to be on for this video because this one is going in deep. And I know I can't think of anything more boring than a court case. The Microsoft acquisition of Activision, Blizzard, and King is incredibly, incredibly boring. But through it, we kind of found out all of the dirty little secrets about Activision, about Xbox and about PlayStation, and I kind of wanted to just take those and put them in a video. And I've really racked my brain to try to decide what would be the most interesting way to make this video. So we're going to try to make it fun. But before you click off, we're not going to go into all of the nitty gritty. We're just going to take away the big things and the things you need to know for the future of Call of Duty. And not just that, also Elder Scrolls 6, Starfield, and a bunch of other games that you may be interested in as well. Now, before we dive into that, those glasses that I was talking about, if you want to pick up yourself a pair, click the link down below. Use code INC at checkout. Save yourself 10%. Gamer Advantage is amazing. They protect your eyes. I highly recommend them check their link out down below now without further ado how are we going to make this interesting well first of all there are essentially three main players at play here that we're going to be talking about throughout this video the first one is bobby kodak he is the ceo of activision we've talked about him a lot on the channel He's not the greatest guy in the world, and I guess you could say he's a little bit of a clown. So every single time we talk about him, I've used the AI tool on Photoshop to, well, make him look like a clown. So he will be seen throughout this video. But also, we have Jim Ryan. Jim Ryan is the CEO of PlayStation. Currently, Call of Duty is being bought by Microsoft, so I guess you could say he's a little bit sad. So every time he comes up, he's going to look a little bit angry. As far as Phil Spencer goes, I couldn't really think of anything to kind of go with for him. So apparently he's just Rambo. He's trying to buy Call of Duty. Those are the people you need to know. You're going to see them on screen several times throughout the video. Now, without further ado, what have these people done? So this court case is currently finished. It is over. We are waiting on a ruling on it and it needs to be done by July 18th because if July 18th happens, essentially the contract is not signed in time, which based off of insider information, it means that the deal is just simply not going to go through. And all that is going to happen is that Microsoft is going to owe Activision a couple of billion dollars because of stipulations in their contract. So at the end of the day, if it doesn't go through, it's not a horrible day for Activision, but it's a very bad day for Microsoft, hence why they're the ones fighting the FTC. So a lot of you have probably heard about this case, but don't know exactly why it was happening. In fact, most of us didn't really know what was going on until this court case actually happened. So essentially, before all of this happened, Bobby Kotick, our clown, went to Microsoft and said, hey, our revenue split on our game isn't high enough. And if you don't make it higher, well, we're just going to make Call of Duty a PlayStation exclusive, which is insane. Call of Duty is a massive moneymaker for both Microsoft and Sony. So of course, Xbox or Microsoft has to comply and therefore they're like, okay, we're going to get bullied around like this. Let's just buy them out. Hence the beginning of the purchase of Activision Blizzard. So this entire court case is going on all the while before it even happened. Call of Duty was almost a PlayStation exclusive, yet PlayStation is fighting against it potentially becoming an Xbox exclusive. However, throughout this court case, what we did find out is that there have been several deals and emails going around that state the fact that for the next 10 years, at the very least, Call of Duty will not just be on Xbox. It'll be on PlayStation, it'll be on Xbox, and even going further to be on Nintendo Switch. Now, there has been some things said that this isn't even in the progress of being made yet. It should have been a long time ago. However, they did agree to it. Microsoft did, yet Activision didn't know that that was going on. So there hasn't been any development towards it. So I don't know what that means for the next couple Call of Duty games, but eventually we're going to be getting Call of Duty on Switch. Now, moving over to Jim Ryan, our sad, sad PlayStation CEO. As far as he goes, he kind of got busted because this entire time he has been fighting against Microsoft's purchase of Activision because he was saying that they were going to make Call of Duty an exclusive. However, we found out in email from him within this court case that he has stated that there was no part of him that believed that Call of Duty would ever become an Xbox exclusive. Kind of digging his own grave there. Now, one big argument that people are making in the FTC side is that if Microsoft buys Activision Blizzard, they're going to have a monopoly on the gaming market. But what we found out through this case is that for the past many, many years, since 2001, Microsoft has actually been losing the console wars. They have been in third place every single year behind 
behind Nintendo and behind PlayStation. So really, this wouldn't monopolize them whatsoever. Now, on the final day of the court case, one thing that they did was bring up some financial experts and officers from Xbox and Microsoft and other people as well. And one thing that they stated and showed in emails is that as soon as this purchase actually goes through within the first year, Activision needs to be making Microsoft money. And they say that that is not possible if they make Call of Duty an Xbox exclusive. The only scenario that they put forth where that was possible is if within the first year of Call of Duty being brought to an exclusive deal on Xbox, it they would have to sell 2 million more subscriptions to Game Pass. That is the only way that they could actually make up their money and make money off of this deal within that year, which is an incredibly high number and not really possible. However, one thing that we did talk about is them trying to increase their Game Pass sales by bringing all of the Call of Duty library onto Game Pass. You could play all of them right away, which now after hearing that lines up even more. Now, on the final day, one thing that was brought up a lot was Phil Spencer's dealing with Bethesda. Now, what has happened with there, if you haven't heard already, is Starfield, the game that is coming out later this year and is going to be the next big thing by the Bethesda, is going to be an Xbox exclusive. They've also pretty much stated that Elder Scrolls 6, which we found out through this, is over five years away, so don't get your hopes up anytime soon, will also be an Xbox exclusive. We found out through the emails that were brought up in depositions that it was actually brought forth pretty much right away that Bethesda's games were going to be exclusive exclusives and they knew this behind the scenes without telling anyone which lends to the question why wouldn't they do this with call of duty and this wasn't in the court case this is my own personal opinion but hear me out as far as that goes call of duty is no longer just a campaign or a multiplayer game call of duty is a live service game and for live service games to make money they need to sell microtransactions. And to do that, the game needs to be available to the most amount of people possible. And by limiting it, it's not going to bring more people to play the game whatsoever. However, a game like Starfield or a game like Elder Scrolls that is story-based, that will drive sales of their consoles and their products and not more sales within the game whatsoever because microtransactions aren't a big thing like they are in live service games whatsoever. That is the main difference and that was something that the judge couldn't really understand. He also couldn't understand why everyone can't just play Call of Duty on their computers. He didn't really seem to understand what a gaming computer was whatsoever nor the fact that they cost upwards of $1,500. So this decision is going to be made up soon within the next couple of weeks and when they come to that verdict, I will cover it then and once again try to make it a little bit more interesting interesting. Uh, but as far as the big information that we got out of this is we did get a release date for the next Call of Duty game, or sorry, not a release date, but a release month. It was confirmed through this court case that the next Call of Duty game is coming out in November. And based off of the leaks we've seen, November 10th is that day that we can expect. And even after this came out within a court case, it's almost as if Activision paid the judge. They actually tweeted with the eye emoji symbolizing that, yeah, that information is true. So yeah, a really weird one. A lot of information that we got out of this is really telling of the things that go on behind closed doors, the big deals that they make. And I'm not saying that any one of these people is doing anything wrong. They're doing their jobs and trying to do the best for the company. It just sometimes it screws over the consumer a little bit. I'd be curious to see where this goes moving forward. But when we get that information, of course, I will keep you guys updated. So make sure you're subscribed, have notifications on. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, peace out. We are, we are for the stars, but we're making this too hard, and I want